Hello dear chess friends, I'm International Master Andreas Trotsky and this time our topic is the square of the pawn. In a given pawn endgames, uh, there are cases when the pawn can be promoted without the help of the king and cases when without the help of the king, the pawn can't be promoted. So how to tell quickly which case you deal with? For example, in this particular case, we can see that after a4, n4, king f4, a5, king e5, a6, king d6, a7, king c7, and a8 queen, white promotes the pawn to queen without the help of the king. So in this particular case, opponent's king, black's king, is simply not in time to stop the pawn. It is not possible to do. So is it really necessary to calculate the whole line every time when you have to understand do you need the help from your king or not? Well, in fact, there is a very good rule, the so-called rule of the square that can help you to simplify the process. So let's get back to the initial position and define the rule of the square. So we have to draw the so-called square of the pawn a3. So the hard way of doing it is just to add all the squares on the way of this pawn to the queen. So they are a4, a5, a6, a7, a8. So we have five squares. We need the same quantity of squares along the third rank, right? Because all sides of the square are equal. So b3, c3, d3, e3, and f3. And now we add two other sides of the square automatically. So we just do this and this. So we now have the square of the pawn a3. Another way, much easier one to draw the square is just to do that with the help of uh, diagonal. So to start with the diagonal, we need pawn a3. And now we draw the diagonal of our square from this pawn to the maximum possible squares up and towards opponent's key. So from a3 to f8 in this particular case. So in this case, we have this sort of diagonal, right? And the rest is not that hard. So we have to add the sides of the square. It's easy to do. So like this. So usually it looks like that. So the rule is, the following. So to stop the pawn, uh, opponent's king should be inside the square. In this particular case, we can see that the king is outside the square. And uh, since it is not black's turn to move, white wins. So the king has no chances to be inside the square of the pawn A. At the moment, it is on A3. After A4, by the way, we have a new square. Let's try the second method because it looks uh, much simpler to perform. So we need the diagonal, right? And uh, the longest possible diagonal from the pawn in the direction up and towards the side where opponent's king is placed. So from a4 to e8, then we add this uh, missing sides of the square. So it is the new square of the pawn, a4. And we can see that making his move, the king can reach only square f4, which is still outside the new square of the pawn a4. Then pawn goes to a5. Again, we have a new square, so the king can't uh, get inside. And so on towards the promotion square, where the square itself collapses, but white promotes the pawn to a queen. When a passed pawn occupies the initial position, so the second or seventh rank, if it is a black pawn, then this rule of the square might be a bit tricky. For example, here, black's turn to move. We can start with drawing the square. So it is this way, right? So the diagonal and the sides. And we can see that the king is outside the square of the pawn a2, but making his next move, uh, black steps inside the square. In fact, it is not enough because pawn moves to a4. And now there is a new square which looks this way. And uh, the king, as we can see, has no chances to step inside. So what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong, but there is an exception. So when we have the pawn on the second rank, so the correct drawing of the square to avoid this PT trick should be done differently. 
what we should do actually is to start with not the pawn itself but with the square right in front of this pawn so in this particular case it is the square a3 so let's draw the square from this a3 so diagonal f3 a3 a8 f8 here is our square and in fact we can understand that opponent's king even making his next move can't step inside this square which means white wins here all right so king g3 a4 king f4 a5 a6 a7 and a8 queen that's it so once again when we deal with the pawn that occupies the initial position we draw our square not starting with the pole but with the square just in front of the pawn in this case we can easily avoid the trick and assess the position correctly let's have a look on the other example here we can see that the pawn occupies the second rank so initial position and we should draw the square starting from the d3 right but the question is which direction to choose because when we deal with the pawn on the a or h file everything is pretty much clear here we have two diagonals possible i already told that but it's really important to repeat so the direction is towards uh, opponent's king right so from here we can draw two squares they are this one and another one is this one and of course the left one will be absolutely not interesting because it doesn't affect the evaluation of the position and it is absolutely incorrect square so towards the place towards the side where opponent's king is so here it is the king side it is the right side of the board in this particular case we can easily assess that so well if it is black's turn to move then the king has the chance to step inside this square and this means that without the help of the king this pawn can't be promoted so after d4 the king easily stops the pawn it is very important to understand the thing this mistake of choosing the wrong direction is very common among beginners so as you can see the rule of the square of the pawn is very important it really simplifies the evaluation of the position so it saves you a lot of time nevertheless you have to be very careful applying this rule because there are of course exceptions let's have a look on one of them so we can see that the past pawn which is placed on the c file occupies the initial position so the square should be drawn this way from c3 to h3 to c3 to c8 to h8 there is our square and black's turn to move which looks like a drawn position uh, because black easily steps inside the square in fact after white's natural move c4 we can see that black skin simply can't step inside a new square because of uh, natural limitations so the new square is this one and natural limitations that i mentioned are black's pawn f4 which simply prevents the king from moving to f4 square and white's pawn f3 that controls g4 square so these two pawns completely prevent black's king from stepping inside the square which means the king can't stop the pawn and white easily wins so after king takes f3 and c5 the king can't stop the pawn and black's f4 pawn is not dangerous because white's king simply blockades it staying on f1 white wins so this means you have to consider concrete features of the position so never apply the rule of the square of the pawn uh, blindly and uh, automatically try to understand what can simply go wrong so you have to consider every additional pawn that can be the limitation these pawns can be your pawns or opponent's pawns let's have a look on the other example a proper understanding of the square of the pawn can give you the key to understanding of variety of different positions for example in this case white has two pawns they are connected past pawns and the king is far away which at first glance looks like a problem for white because 
well, at least one pawn can't be protected. In fact, these pawns can be captured because once the king takes a b4 pawn, this leads to c6, the situation in which the king can never step inside the square of the pawn and white easily promotes the pawn, which means that these pawns are invulnerable and this gives white unlimited time to get closer with the king and to help to promote one of them. There are a lot of interesting cases connected to separated pawns. For example, this sort of pawns, when we have only one file between them, are extremely efficient in protecting each other. For example, if king attacks one of them, white simply plays c5 here. And uh, the point here that king simply can't take a4 pawn, because in this case, we already discussed this situation, the king can never step inside the square of the pawn so that this pawn simply promotes. So after c5, king goes to a6, which is the waste of time, which gives white the time to get closer with the own king. And once the king goes to b7, actually creating the threat of attacking c5, white pushes another one to a5 so that both pawns occupy the same rank. And when the king attacks another one, once again, white uses the same pattern and place a6 and we can see that black can't take c5 which means that again the king simply gets closer next move and if black's king goes back and forth on c7 and c6 squares at some point the king simply gets to uh, d5 square forcing black's king to go away and then one of the pawns will be promoted in this situation we deal actually with another interesting rule so we have, again, two separated pawns occupying the same rank. But now we have three files between them, which is, of course, a different situation. So for this sort of situation, we have to draw the mutual square of these two pawns. For this purpose, of course, we have to draw it the hard way, actually counting the squares. So here we have five squares for one side. So after that, we just add another side here, which also includes the pawn and makes five squares. And then we add two other sides. So here we have this mutual square of these two pawns. So very interesting rule here is that if this mutual square reaches the first or back rank, so it depends on with which color you play, then these pawns promote automatically without the king. For example, like here, for instance, a4, king b4, then e4, king takes a4, and e3. We can see that the square of this one pawn is this one, and it's not possible for a pawn's king to step inside this square, so this pawn promotes. If we draw the mutual square of these two pawns in this given position, then we receive the following. So we can notice that this square doesn't reach the first rank. And in this case, these pawns actually can't be promoted without the help of the king, which means that white's king simply can stop these pawns. And uh, in this particular case, the game ends in a draw because black's king is limited with white's pair of pawns h5 and g6. If black, however, tries to promote these pawns, he simply loses. For example, a5, king b5, e5, king takes a5, and we can see that after e4, king goes to b4, we have this square, so the king is inside the square of this resulting pawn, which means that the king stops the pawn, and having this h5, g6, invulnerable pair of pawns, white wins. So black has to wait, and king moves to f6. So here, what to do with white, actually. The king should be between these pawns, inside this mutual square, and uh, in this case, he's ready to stop the pawns when they start moving. So if king goes to b6, 
actually getting closer to one of the pawns. This leads to e5 and after king c5, a5. And now we have the pattern from the previous example. So now the mutual square of these two pawns actually reaches the first rank, which means that black doesn't need the king to promote one of them. So king goes to c6, very flexible move, and after king g7, king c5. So in this particular case, we have a draw. And this position is different. So again, the mutual square of these pawns gives us this drawing, which means that square doesn't reach the first rank. And this means, uh, according to previous examples, that king can stop pawns. But actually, white can achieve even more here because, in fact, what happens? We have two files between these pawns which means that pawns are closer to each other and appears that in this particular case, it is enough for the king just to grab both of them. So king goes to a4, attacking a5, all right? So if black does nothing, then the king simply takes on a5, simply still being inside the square of the pawn d5. And if pawn goes to d4, then king goes to b3. And now black loses the flexibility because uh, another pawn can't move. Pawn d4 also can't move. The king simply takes it. And if king just moves, then king c4 attacking the pawn. And that's it. So a4, king takes d4. And we can see that the king is simply inside the square, which means that the king stops and grabs that pawn. And white wins because of uh, resulting h5, g6 tandem. So, as we can see, the rule of the square of the pawn really simplifies the understanding of many different cases. It uh, gives you a chance to evaluate the position quickly without uh, calculating the whole line from the very beginning to the very end. At the same time, we can see that it might be tricky. So in some cases, you have to understand the concrete features of the concrete position. So these features might change the appliance of the rule. So you don't have to apply the rule blindly. And what is really important is to make this uh, drawing of the square in your mind automatic. So for this purpose, you have to train a lot. But believe me, if you will master this technique, it will simplify the understanding of uh, majority of king and pawn endgames positions, at the same time uh, saving the time over the board. Thanks a lot for your attention. See you next lessons.